Joseph Aguche is struggling to cope with the psychological impact of losing his entire family in one accident. He's trying to survive, but the added pressure of no work and nowhere to live is weighing on him heavily. Let's take a look at his story. I met Joseph many years ago, and I know his family very well. And I know they were traveling home together with the children. They had an accident on their way. They were going for X months. 2001, we were traveling for a journey to my place of town at, Mac uh, at Benue State. We were on uh, uh, 18th of December, where we had an accident. At the process, I lost my father, my mother, my brothers, and my sisters. I was the only survivor. Life has been so hard for him. When the accident happened, after the loss of uh, my mother, my father, my brothers and my sisters, I wasn't myself. I was so, I felt so bad to the extent that I felt uh, all hope is gone. I am even supposed to go with them that uh, staying in this world, on this planet, isn't uh, going to be good for me. For the long period I've got to know Joseph, he's so determined to become great. He has a very big dream of becoming an economist. This dream is shattered. As a result of the accident, I had to drop out from the school because there was no body to finance me. During rainy season, I farm Later, after the season is over, I'll come back to Lagos and I'll look for some mania job. Life is not too easy for him. Whatever he has been trying to do, no help from anywhere because he was left alone. The period I know Joseph, to Joseph is this kind of diligent and dedicated personality. He wouldn't want anything that would distract his ambition of becoming a great economist. And he has been living from hand to mouth and things have been so, so difficult for him. Where they were living before, it was church that was paying for the rentage. But in the process where he lost the parents, the church could not even afford to pay the rent for him alone, so they had to quit him out of the house. I was evicted from my house, from where I was living. So, and now, presently, I'm staying with a friend, with my friend, and uh, it has been, been a difficult thing for me and him. I've been a burden to him to the extent that he himself cannot even cope anymore, and uh, he has a family too. One of these ways I felt I could help Joseph because of his touching story, I offer him accommodation, a temporary accommodation, to see how he can start his own life. But I, I got my own family to take care of, and it's painful for me to have asked him to go. But at this level, I have my own problem to attend to, and I can't just continue anymore. During the accident, he sustained some terrible injuries that even to now still give him issues after the occurring of the accident, um, I had a big cut on my leg, which I was always finding difficult to treat. I wasn't having enough money to feed well, so it was always been difficult um, for the leg to like go. Maybe if I can get the leg treated very well, then I can do more job well that will enable me to live a, a where they live. He has been hopeful way back to see that one day things is going to get better for him. And I believe he gets all this assistance. I tell you, his life is going to be uh, a total turnaround. Joseph is going to be celebrating himself for life. And kudos to whoever is going to be assisting Joseph, because I know Joseph will never in a hurry forget any kind of uh, institution or set up organization that will be giving any kind of aid to get his life back on feet. He needed Bosri to see how he can establish and even go into commercial farming. And he also needed a scholarship because as of 2014, he got admission and lost it because of financial constraints. 
as a friend, I keep encouraging him that life is not all about if you lose lots your parents, you still have hope. So we keep telling him whatever he needs, even if he needs anything like a help, and that we, if you know that we can render such help to him, he should not hesitate. Let him tell us anything he needs that we can afford. My wish for Joseph is to finish his school. School has been his hard desire. He has pursued education for so many years, but there was no money to school. So my wish for him, if he could get that assistant to finish his school, because life these days, without education, you are nobody. Once he acquired that education, I believe everything will be okay with Joseph. Something in me keep telling me, gingering me up that uh, there is still hope that with God, sometimes I, will, I can still become something that I never expected. So uh, that was how I, with the courage and all these things, I was so courageous and I had to move on till I got to this stage. It's harrowing to lose a loved one and I can't imagine what it's like to lose every single one that you love in one tragic incident. Stay tuned because after the break we'll have Joseph right here in the Touching Lives studio. Welcome back to Airtel Touching Lives. Join me as I welcome my guests, Joseph and Ralph. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to our studio today. Thank you for being here. How are you doing? We're all fine. Fine. Um, Joseph, I don't know how much sorries I can say to you because I can't imagine what it is that you're going through. But how are you dealing with the psychological and the emotional aspects of the fact that you don't have a family here anymore? Well, um, it is not something I can really say as it is, but uh, sometimes they said when, when something happens to one, you just have to take it the way it is, the way you see it, because uh, for the fact that you're not the one that made yourself, you never created yourself. There is someone, somebody, which is God, that created you. So anything that happens to you, you just take it as it comes, and uh, you keep your life the way you're supposed to live, and you keep moving. Have you had any breaking down days at all? At times when things are not going, going on well, the way I, uh, I expected it, I just fell uh, in fact the word is like uh, something uh, nothing to write home about i feel like going down and uh, maybe having a, a hole a pit and put myself into it so how do you stay strong when you when you feel like that because that's like just wanting to not be here wanting to take away your your own life how do you how do you end up staying strong um, the way i i end up then getting myself strong is just true and the courage I get from and God that there is somebody that is greater than every human, and which is God. So that moment I go, just pick up my Bible at times and I go through it. Ralph, um, you know, when you see Joseph, if he doesn't get any help or any assistance, what do you see happening to him? Yeah, life is all about patient because I know what uh, Joseph is going through. Any human being can go through it, but I believe these days, because like I know Joseph, his family, no help from anybody. It's only God that assists him even till now. He has been going up and down. But as a friend, we keep encouraging him because all we could do is just to encourage him because like me, I have my family which I'm taking care of. Even I'm struggling, but I have to at least edit any time he comes to me. I will let him know that whatever you are doing in this life, it's only God. Just look up to God. It's only God that can give you the help. No human being can help you. Joseph, what are some of the things you've had to do to just keep body and soul together, as we, we normally say? Yeah, as I, when um, things happened, happened to me and I felt that there was no hope, nothing, as in nowhere to run to and to get something to fed on. So I had to go and was working as in doing uh, security. So I worked as a security for some time just managing the money I was receiving wasn't enough so I had to like stop from it and then I went to another minor job which uh, I was working in the factory for some period I had to stop because the money I keep getting from there is just uh, to eat and to transport at the end of it I will have no saving nothing nothing 
Ralph, you've, you've seen his struggle. You've been there with him as well. And you've helped him too. And I want to say thank you for that. What kind of help do you really think he needs now that can get him to where he needs to be? His vision is life to become educated. Because being an educated person, you can do whatever you want to do in this life. But once you are not educated, it's like the society didn't even recognize you. That is the life he's living now because as it is, he's not recognized in any way. But my wish for him now as it is, I want anybody to help him now. It's all about education. Because I don't see any amount of money somebody will give to you and say start business to help you tomorrow. But when somebody help you to at least acquire education to the level of maybe degree, you can stand on your own. So it's only education I wish you said to be, at least to be educated. Have you ever been tempted to do bad things or the wrong thing just to survive? I have always been, but uh, I had never for once had that intention of going to involve myself in anything dubious, anything bad, because I know the end of it is always bad. It's always terrible. It, it has no gain. It has no gain. So with the courage of, with the courage and based on what my parents has been telling me before departed the, the world has always really helped me to keep uh, keeping, as in to keep away from all these thoughts of, uh, as in going to join bad gangs and do something uh, bad to end living. So I always keep, uh, keep, keep it far from myself. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for coming on the program. I'm, I'm sure your parents are, you know, smiling from above, looking at you, that they're proud of the decisions that you've made so far, however difficult it is for you, and I'm sure that you're going to be okay. Um, just the fact that, you know, you stay standing, working hard, doing your best, to try to make something of yourself, people are going to be inspired by your courage and your strength. So I want to say thank you very much for being here. Thank you for sharing your story. And Raphael, I want to say thank you for even helping him and nominating him as well. Um, you know we're all about touching lives here because this is Etel Touching Lives. And something that we believe in is being people being self-sufficient. And we want to help you to stay self-sufficient so that you can then eventually educate yourself and do all the wonderful things that you want to do and be that great man that your parents dreamed of. So what Etel wants to do for you is that they're going to help you with setting up a goat farm in Otuku. Thank you. Ah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. So happy. Thank God for her. Turn. So happy. So with the goat farm, you're going to you'll be able to, you know, wear your goat, sell, do some business, and then actually get the education that you want sure. and do so much more better. Sure. Very, very. It, 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 in, fact, uh, uh, in fact, it's just like uh, I'm on top of the world now. Just like I'm on top of the world now. I'm happy. Very, very happy. Because uh, what is about to happen to me now, I don't, I've never for once expected it. I wasn't expecting it. So I just really believe that... Uh, Airtel is really, really, they are real. They are real for sure. Airtel is real. Airtel is real. Airtel is real. I'm overwhelmed. I'm short of words to say, really, Airtel is touching life. Now I know that Airtel is touching life. I'm very grateful for whatever Airtel is doing for my, for my friends. I'm very, very happy. Airtel, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we thank you for staying strong, for staying courageous um, and not breaking down or not digging that hole or digging that ground and going into it because you are so full of greatness and there's so much more for you to do. Thank you. So man. thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks, man. Wow, it's been all smiles right here at the Touching Lives studio. For us at Airtel Touching Lives, it's really about teaching a man to fish and making people become more self-sufficient and self-reliant. You've been watching Airtel Touching Lives. Until next time, goodbye. I want to touch your life. I want to be the change. I'm going to shine my light. I'm going to make a difference. Touch your life. Be the change. Shine my light.